OK, substitution cipher uh, program. Actually, two of them. Um, but yeah. So I'll just run it. We need to enter um, an integer value for a randomization seed. Why? I'll explain. So basically, substitution cipher. This is the one you do as a kid, and you write out A, B, C, D, E, E, F, G, all the way to Z. And then you randomly choose a letter for A, randomly choose a letter for, for B to s replace, um, and then you go the w whole way through your A to Z, replacing with one um, unique letter from your alphabet in a different place, if you get what I mean. So in other words, you can't use a letter twice, um, which is good. It's very similar to Caesar cipher where you just shift the alphabet left or right. Um, that would be somewhat easier to crack though. So anyway, yeah, take I take a list, or I, I give a list to the program of the letters of the alphabet and then I randomly order them. And then I use that as the key. So top secret, first letter is T and we have decided we're using our randomizer that B will replace T and there it is B and there's another one B for a T so yeah pretty straightforward there it is encoded so brute force analysis uh, or attack would work if one could be bothered to either look at every output for it suddenly becoming readable or probably better using an automated uh, check for readable words uh, which would give lots of false positives and then you could um, order the the positives by number of words and probably near the top of that pile would be the right answer however there are 2 to 88 permutations and that would still take several years um, or many years on the average PC so we won't do that Instead, we'll use frequency analysis. So we will take a generic um, ordering of um, the frequency with which letters occur in the English language here, taken from Wikipedia, um, which of course, and there's a whole load of assumptions in there that, you know, the language used in here, the version of English, will be close enough to whatever was analyzed to give this which is unlikely um, but anyway close enough for jazz um, let's try it so what do we need to do we need to take the encoded message which we've intercepted somehow and look at the frequency of the letters in it and this is a representation so if this is a this is b this is c c would be the most common in our message and there are a lot of C's and they are in fact replacing the E which makes sense because the E is the most common letter in English in general which is a bit of a problem here um, so using that we can reorder the letters that we found in our encoded message and here they are so C is the most common and basically replace those with the kind of twin letter from the order of the English frequency letters set if you like and this is what we get and it's rubbish um, the only word that you might guess is the and then you would guess that U is H but that wouldn't get you very far in this case because there really isn't enough to work on here um, so two things you need a lot more words you need a lot more language input to get a good enough frequency spread because if you look here we've got a lot of twos a uh, number of ones and a lot of zeros well they are going to be arbitrarily ordered that's probably going to cover like these um, so these really are interchangeable in terms of the analysis we've done on this encoded message it's it's not good enough we haven't got enough data here to work on but if we had um, more data or if it were of a certain type that really matched this frequency um, we might get more out or both of those things are true now which they are in this case in the second
program, which is basically this program with all of the parts up to here removed because we don't need to encode a message now. We don't need to create uh, a top secret message from a message. We're being given some homework from the course book. Um, and this is the homework. This is the message we're given. And we're given it in lowercase. I've just changed it to uppercase just because. Um, so let's run this. So this is the same program with the kind of first half removed and then an extra bit added on the end. So here's our encoded message that we were given and we don't know what it says. Um, let's move this up a bit. And this is it decoded just using the frequency analysis from this uh, program but just with lots of the outputs cut out because we don't need to see it anymore. Now here we've definitely got a word there, 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 so the this looks like essence. This looks like because the practice, right? So, yeah, basically, the university has given us a, a, an easy-ish text. But yeah, okay. So, let's switch Y for our B. And now we're getting this. So we're getting because, mm, except W is wrong. So W for U because the practice F for P because the practice something the basic so N for I uh, and I'm guessing essence right so O to N And I'm guessing because the practice probably of the basic movements. So let's do J to V. Because the practice, yeah, I'm going to go for of. So W needs to become F. Of Yata, could be yoga, right? Is the focus and masters of self? It doesn't make sense. Is the essence of Matsubigashi Riku Karate? I happen to know there's a karate that sounds a bit like that. Okay, so uh, Y to K. That didn't work. Oh, it did work. Here we go. Karate. Do I shall trig to elucidate? Try to elucidate. G to Y. I know there's some problems back here. Um, or maybe there isn't. Maybe it is kata, as in a kata. Okay, in Japanese martial arts. Accordion W. So W has to become a G. I think we're almost there. The significance of some must remain unexplained. So J to X. would have to be dualified. So now J has to become K, Q. Might be there now. No, J is still a problem. J becomes Z or S. Probably not S. Uh, proper application authority. That's it. Decoded. So the frequency analysis gave us enough to get the answer in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 switches. And it's possible that we could have done it faster. Um, I may. I was playing with the J a lot there. If I'd switched that right the first, the first time, it may not have been such a problem, etc. But yeah. Um, that works and it was a useful way to um, learn some basics of uh, Python which I'm sure I'm still writing horribly like um, how to write a, um, a
procedure or function, whatever you want to call it, and also how to kind of get uh, an input and check the input in a way that enables me to ask for the input again if it's an error, etc. Um, so I found a way to do that. It's, it's always ugly and it's always difficult to do that well, so I'm probably not doing that right yet either, but um, you know, it works for now. <laughs>